Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Dolores Tarver. I'm a licensed psychologist and creator of this podcast, Tea Time with Dr. Tarver, which is intended to be for wellness and not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health provider. So as I like to say, it is time for the tea. So I have been having this conversation quite a bit here in the past week. It's, it's always interesting to me how these topics will come to me based on conversations or things that I see, and it'll be just a recurring theme um, that I'll notice in my interactions with, with my clients or with people that I'm talking to. But I was having this conversation about what happens when we are feeling like something is going on in our relationships and our partners are not being forthcoming and we're trying to get a better understanding of what might be going on. Now, this topic is one that uh, I think elicits a lot of strong response from people. So you all, we don't have to fall out about this now, but this is an opportunity for us to have a good dialogue and think about how we wanna move forward as we discuss the topic, snooping versus not snooping. So to snoop or not to snoop, that is the question as we talk about relationship dynamics such as boundaries, trust, and issues of insecurity and control. So I I think it's important for us whenever we are getting into a discussion like this to get some background and some understanding about how people get to this place of thinking about whether or not they're going to snoop to try to get some information, to better understand something they feel like, there's a piece missing, my partner isn't quite sharing those lies of omission as we like to say, or maybe they're having difficulty expressing themselves or they're shut down or whatever it is that allows us to feel like we are considering if I wanna take matters into my own hands, if you will, and get some additional information in other ways. So the scenarios that I hear most frequently are there has been a violation of trust in the relationship. So maybe there's been infidelity in the marriage or a person had multiple partners and when you thought that it was a monogamous relationship um, or there has been a history of cheating in the past by you or your partner. And these are things that often this, this notion of infidelity, cheating, uh, are there other people that you are seeing the, the um, navigating of these boundaries in, in our relationship tends to be one of the primary reasons why I see people questioning whether or not they should be snooping. And in that questioning, we start making statements like, well, if you don't have anything to hide, then why would you deny me access to things? So what will happen is a person in this partnership, uh, sometimes situationships may say, well, let me see your phone. If you don't have anything to hide, let me see your phone or call this person back in front of me or uh, let me see your social media account. Give me your past words to your social media or to your email. Let me look for myself. Uh, I feel like you're showing me a part of some information, but you're not showing me all of it or you have deleted information. I want to be able to take a look for myself. And if you are not doing anything, uh, then why would you deny me this access? And then sometimes there is just this, we have been hurt in relationships before we have had um, trauma uh, around relationships. And so we are concerned about a person not sharing information with us or doing something to embarrass us. I hear people say a lot, I don't want to be played. Uh, I don't want to feel like a fool. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to uh, enter into something thinking that you're one person and find out later that you're this different person. And so these are the things that cause people to feel as if they are justified in having access to someone's information, whether that is with or without permission. Uh, So how much do we share? And I think this is a legit question as you are talking about relationship dynamics. Are we going to have the type of relationship where we have all access to each other's social media, phones, emails, other private information? Uh, Are we in the type of relationship where we say, 
I don't want to go down that road. So let's keep these things separate. And instead, let's work on making sure we have a trusting, open, honest relationship so that we're communicating and don't have a need to be able to access this information with or without permission. And, and sometimes we feel as if relationships means that I should have access to everything. And so uh, for some people, that means your bank accounts, your social media, your phone, um, anything I want to know about your past interactions with people that you should answer all questions. And some people are like, there's just some information. I don't know that it would be pertinent for me to share or healthy for me to share. So some of the things that I like to talk to people about um, are navigating and understanding what you need in a relationship so that you don't find yourself in a situation where you're trying to figure it out as you go along. Right? So we prevention is always better than intervention. You know, that's one of my favorite things I like to say. So what can help me with this? Uh, so I want to start any kind of interaction with a clarity about what is needed. So I don't end up putting myself or a person in an, in an unrealistic expectation of, of, of a partnership. And that also that I'm not in a different relationship than they are in, which I find is the case when we don't actually define what our dynamics are going to be. But a study I think that is important to highlight uh, came out of United Kingdom in 2013, found that 30 per, 34% of women engaged in snooping and 62% of men engaged in snooping. And I know that for a lot of us, we think that only women snoop. And I want to really debunk that myth. People snoop. So for whatever reason, whether it is uh, fear, insecurity, jealousy, a need to have some control, um, wanting to see where you are, wanting to try to make sure that you're not interacting in any ways that make me uncomfortable or, or thinking that I can um, maybe stop you from engaging in a behavior if I, if I know uh, where you are or have access to knowing where you are or what you're discussing. Right? So there are a lot of different reasons why we end up engaging in, in those snooping behaviors. And so 89% of these people, though, um, so let me kind of get back to the major reasons that I talked about that we start considering snooping is because there was a fear that this person was cheating. And so the snooping behavior for 89 percent of these people was related to what they perceived to be a possible either infidelity um, cheating scenario in this in this relationship. And I think that that is the most common reason why people snoop, even though, as I highlighted, there are a few other things. So what do you think they found? What do we always say? When you go looking for something, you're going to find it. So, yes, um, nearly half of those people acknowledged that they did, in fact, find out their partner was cheating. Now, I know that you all are thinking, well, conversation over. We're done. Clearly, that justifies me and my need to snoop. It really doesn't. But what it does lead to is a discussion about if I already feel like there is something going on that would warrant me thinking this person is cheating, did I really need to use snooping as my mechanism to discuss what I was feeling? We all have discernment. We all have the ability to have something innate within us that lets us know. Some people call it insight. Um, some people call it intuition that lets us know that something in this relationship dynamic is off. And so that means that there is something underlying this. And would it be better served? for me to actually address that as opposed to going to the snooping before we go there. So one of the major reasons why there is often a concern about a person cheating is because of a lack of trust. So what affects trust in our relationships? We want to be able to feel safe and secure in our interactions with people. And one of the reasons we don't feel safe and secure is because there is not open, honest communication. And that is one of the biggest things that I see is that we don't know how to talk to each other and we have problems with intimacy. Intimacy does not necessarily mean sexual intimacy. Intimacy encompasses a lot of different things. Conflict intimacy, how we work through problems, financial intimacy, how we manage our money and are connected in this uh, relationship together. There are, as I talk to you all about all the time, intellectual intimacy, things that we share, we're uh, dialoguing, we have purpose and meaning, and we encourage and, and, and support each other. So there are a lot of different, different dynamics of intimacy. And one of the things that 
people often struggle with is when a partner is not very open in terms of sharing. So maybe you have a partner who has a hard time communicating. They may have a hard time communicating their feelings. They may have a hard time addressing uh, problems. Sometimes we are conflict avoidant, so we really don't want to address anything difficult. And so it is easier for me to not have a conversation with you and try to maybe get at things in other ways. Sometimes we end up in arguments. People can be really defensive. We can have a hard time being able to talk through things together. And so I, I might feel dismissed or you may shut down or I may shut down. I may become aggressive. So these kind of things are interfering. And so to avoid what I perceive to be a potential conflict, then I'll go to snooping to try to get information in other ways. And it doesn't always have to be about cheating. And I know that's one of the main reasons why people snoop, but sometimes I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with you. Your mood has changed, your behavior has changed, and you're saying nothing's wrong. I know something's wrong because I'm your partner. So I may be looking on here to see like, would you talk to your mom about it? Did you talk to your best friend about it? Getting on social media? Did you make a post about it? Right? So those are some of the ways that we're trying to get at information because we have a breakdown in our ability to communicate effectively with each other. So something has stopped us from sharing. Maybe that is that you're sharing with someone else. And so part of the challenge when we have difficulty in our relationships communicating with each other, we will often find other mechanisms to communicate. Now, what some people will say is if we're not having sex, then you out there getting it from somewhere else. What I'll say to people, if there is a gap in our ability to be able to be intimately connected, then we do have a tendency to try to fill those voids in other ways. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily cheating on you, but it may mean that I find it easier to talk to my friend about it than I find talking to you. So then I'm not sharing with you anymore because I talked to my friend about it earlier and I feel like I came up with some good ideas. Maybe I have a therapist. I'm talking to my therapist. I'm not talking to you. Maybe I'm talking to my mom or my dad. I'm not talking to you. Right. So see, these are some of the ways where you can see there is a breakdown in this communication and in this intimacy. And so now I'm trying to figure out how to answer questions since I feel like I can't get those answers from you. Now, we do know that one of the major areas that will cause a, 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 a breakdown in trust is when there has been some infidelity in the relationship. And so what often ends up happening in those situations is that there's a prior history of cheating. So you've already hurt me in this relationship, cheating on me before, then I am already primed to feel like you have the potential to cheat on me again. Now that is not necessarily true. Just because a person cheats once, even if a person cheats more than once, that doesn't mean that they're going to continue to cheat if they have addressed these behaviors and have a plan that they're working on treatment recovery, addressing why they're continuing to cheat and putting some good boundaries and parameters in place. However, what ends up happening is Again, when I'm looking for something, I'll find it. If I feel like you have the capacity to cheat, I'm going to then possibly interpret any behavior that you may be engaging in that reminds me of something that you did before as cheating, even if you're not cheating. So when I go snooping and I'm looking at messages, you may be talking to someone. It could be casual, not anything that is out of line, but hey, you're talking to someone of the opposite gender. That makes me uncomfortable. Or you're talking to someone who you would uh, be interested in dating. Or you're talking to someone that's your type, right? So we start looking at those things because this is where the insecurity piece comes in. Now I'm questioning whether or not I'm good enough, that I'm doing things that are driving you away, or I'm, um, you're looking for things that I'm not giving you. Because we often, as partners who have been cheated on, start questioning, what did I do? Right. So now I'm looking at other people and they become a potential threat to me. So then I'm suspicious of you. Your behavior may have changed. You're not feeling good. Your behavior may have changed because you just found out some bad news. Your behavior may have changed because you're having some stress at your job. But in my mind, I'm perceiving your behaviors change because you're cheating again. And I want to be clear too. snooping is not going to prevent anybody from cheating. So you have an open access or access uh, while you sneaking over here, learning all the different ways to not let people know you're on their devices. You've gotten so savvy at it. That is not going to prevent anyone from being unfaithful to you. That's why the communication piece is going to be so important. We'll talk about that as we talk about healthier ways to be able to address 
the challenges. But to go back to the insecurity piece, do I have a worth issue that I'm struggling with? Am I the one that has cheated previously? So I've got some guilt about my past behaviors and I'm projecting that onto you. So I am concerned that you may be out here doing something because I know that I have in the past. Now, what does that song say? Um, you should have cheated on me. Um, everything that I've done to you, why wouldn't you? So some of those things factor into how we're viewing a situation, how we feel in a particular relationship. Sometimes I recognize you're not a healthy partner for me and that you've been very clear with me about the fact that you don't want to be in a monogamous relationship, but I am trying to create a monogamous relationship when you've been very clear with me that that's not what you want. And I will talk to people about if your partner says that they want a polyamorous relationship or they want to have the capacity to date multiple people or they don't want to be in a committed relationship, then you cannot put the boundary of monogamy on top of that relationship and feel justified in your snooping behaviors and get upset with them when they engage in behaviors of seeing other people. They've already let you know that's the case. So sometimes we are putting ourselves in situations that are unhealthy for us and feeling like we are justified in our behaviors when instead I need to really address why am I in something that's not a good fit for me? Do I feel like I cannot date someone? And that goes to the insecurity and the worth issue piece that leads to these distortions that I can't find someone who can be in a committed relationship. It is absolutely true that there are some people who would prefer to be in relationships with multiple people. That's how they're oriented. There's nothing wrong with that. There are also people who want to be in a singular, monogamous, committed relationship. And if that's what you want, then we need to make sure that you're dating people like that. And the other thing that I like to talk to people about is we say that we are snooping because we feel like a person is keeping secrets. Yet snooping in itself is a secrecy behavior. So I'm over here taking screenshots of your information in your phone, figuring out your past codes while you're in the bathroom, trying to wait till you go to sleep, uh, making sure that I don't leave fingerprints, bypassing your facial recognition software that you have on there. That is secrecy. So I'm justifying using secrecy to try to shed some light on secrecy. Is that the best way for me to really handle that situation? And then a lot of people feel guilt after they snoop. So now I got to deal with that in this relationship dynamic. I've snooped. I haven't found anything. And now I feel bad because I wasn't trusting of you when there was not really a reason for me to do so. Or if there was something I felt I could have handled that in a different way other than snooping. And I will tell you, there is few things that feel less than being falsely accused of something. The few things feel less hurtful. Um, or more hurtful, I should say. Few things feel more hurtful than being falsely accused of something you didn't do. So you have not only thought I was cheating, you've snooped, um, broken my privacy, and all to find out that there wasn't anything going on. Then, then I've got to repair that in the relationship if I can. So now I've brought an additional issue into this relationship that didn't have to be there. And I'm magnifying things. So... What are some, some other approaches that might be more effective? I will tell you that you are absolutely well within your rights to have a healthy relationship. And let me also be clear about this. If there have been some issues in your marriage, in your relationship, you two have gone to therapy and you have discussed that as a way to real rebuild trust, you have decided to have an open um, access policy to phones and social media accounts and all, then by all means please follow your treatment recommendations if you have decided outside of treatment that you both want to have the type of relationship where you have open access to each other then by all means follow what you two both have agreed upon in your relationship so I'm not talking about either of those examples as I go into recommendations that may be healthier. This is for people who do not have permission to access someone's private information and are taking it upon themselves to do so, okay? So let's talk about what might be some better ways 
to address these things that you are feeling because you're feeling something and I want to honor that you're feeling something is off in your relationship. Something does not feel right. And there is truth to that, right? So what is a better approach to us is let's talk about it. There is a difference between openness and privacy. We want openness in the relationship. We want to be able to talk through things. We want to be transparent. We want to have a safe space. We want to be able to effectively communicate and also come up with some solutions to some things, some recommendations, some ways that we are going to work on this so we can have some resolve to these issues. We can do that and everyone still maintain your privacy because again, there is no guarantee that I just, because I give you open access, that means we're going to address these issues in this relationship. So let's talk about how we can work through them in different ways. So whatever you two decide upon, those are your boundaries. And those boundaries start with what type of relationship do we have? Are we in a committed monogamous relationship? Are we in an open relationship? Are we in a polyamorous relationship? There are a lot of different types of relationship dynamics. And so oftentimes what I find when this gets to be muddled is because we don't want to ask the question, what are we doing? Or we've asked the question, what are we doing? And our partner has said, let's not put titles on anything. Let's not put titles on anything means you are not in a monogamous relationship. So if that's something that you want, then you probably don't need to go any further in this type of relationship with this person who has told you that's not the place that they're in. So step one is let's identify what we have so that we can talk about how we want to maintain respect in this relationship have our boundaries in this relationship, have openness in this relationship and address any kind of issues we may have with trust. Okay. You may decide together that I'm not really comfortable with you having friends who you could be interested in also dating. Those pose a risk factor to you that could end up just putting us both in um, uncompromising situations. So let's talk about how we're going to navigate that. How are we going to navigate the people that you work with? How are we going to navigate people that you still interact with that you used to date? How are we going to navigate people um, who may be in your friend group already, right? So I'm not going to just tell you, don't talk to your coworkers uh, that happen to also be attractive, or don't talk to your friends that you've had for 20 years before you met me that are also good looking, right? But how do we navigate that? And we may come up with some options such as, hey, when you're talking to this person, let me know. Or when you're going on outings with this person, make sure it's in a group. Or So we can talk through those kind of things because if you think you're not going to be tempted in a relationship, you're not being honest with yourself. There are lots of attractive people out here and somebody is going to catch your eye. And if you're in a vulnerable place and someone starts talking to you out of that vulnerability, you might end up loosening those boundaries. So that's why we want to have open conversations so that when something is going on, if I'm feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm much more tempted What's going on in our relationship that I'm so tempted that I'm looking at these other people that I'm thinking about these other people in this way and being secure and safe enough in your relationship to talk about it. So what and this is addresses the insecurity piece. So what we don't want to happen is your insecurities get in the way of your partner being able to be open with you about what they're feeling that they're feeling um, tempted or they're feeling like their intimacy isn't being met or they're feeling like you all are distant, right? So we want to be able to talk about that in a non-defensive way and think about, okay, well, how are we going to address that? Do we need to go to therapy to work on that? Are there things that we can be doing to build intimacy? Are there things we can be doing to rebuild trust if trust has been eroded? So we come up with a plan that we're both working on And then that way we know we're on the same page. And as things come up, we can address them. So I'm not telling you to ignore those nagging feelings. I'm not telling you to have conversations where you're avoiding and don't really address the issues. I'm telling you to make sure that you have the skills to be able to effectively do that before you enter into those conversations. And I will also say to you that when people are not willing, when you don't have skills, when you realize, because Truthfully, all of us are learning and growing. And so we need to get those skills. That's why therapists go see therapists. 
This is why oftentimes in a relationship, people will seek couples counseling because we just get to a point where maybe we need a refresher on some skills or maybe we just didn't learn them. We came from environments where they weren't necessarily taught or modeled. And so we need to talk to a professional and this would be an opportunity for you to do so. When your partner is not willing to learn additional skills, then that might be also an indication for you about that your partner is not willing to really address these issues in the relationship. And that's something that needs to be discussed as well. Am I internalizing, right? Am I projecting onto you something that didn't happen in our relationship, but that happened to me previously and I'm making you pay for it. And if that's the case, I need me to be in my own individual therapy. If I have a hard time sitting and hearing feedback about myself, I need to be in my own individual therapy. If I have a hard time telling you how I feel or I am so fearful that you will reject me that I don't bring things up and I end up going along with things that are uncomfortable for me that I later then lash out at you about, then I need to be in my own individual therapy. So there are a lot of instances in this where I will say therapy is probably going to be a good option. Therapy, coaching, um, skills building, workshops, those kind of things that are going to allow you to be able to address maybe some of these issues or areas where you're a little bit more underdeveloped. And oftentimes we need to do work on ourselves and the relationship. So it's not just one person. And I know sometimes we like to say, well, it's this other person's issue. They're difficult to talk to or they are defensive or they it's hard for them to give um, to hear feedback about themselves. But I'm also creating an environment for you where you don't feel safe or valued. So we have to address that, too. How are we going to handle when someone violates these relationship dynamics? Because there are going to be people that approach you. There are going to be people that approach your partner. They may uh, express interest in you in some kind of way. How are we going to deal with that? How are we going to deal with that when we're together? How are we going to deal with that when we're separate? How are we going to deal with those uh, DMs that we receive, those instant messages that pop up, that text from that ex that pops up, that when we were on a, a social media or dating sites and people still have our information and they end up getting bored and start reaching out to folks they haven't talked to in two, three years. Uh, how are we going to deal with that? So if we are talking about these things up front and navigating them as they happen, then that eliminates more of an opportunity to erode trust in our relationship. And it sets these healthy boundaries that we want to have in place. And yes, we may have different ways of communicating about things. I may need a moment to process and think about it and I'll come back, but I need to come back. And so we need to make sure that we're revisiting things and we have some resolution on things and don't just have a bunch of unaddressed um, issues floating around that are stacking on top of each other. And the more wounds we have, the harder it gets to be able to address some things. And so frequently when we go years or months and let stuff go. We haven't really let it go. It's still there. And so now I'm throwing all of this stuff at you because I never addressed it. And that's going to affect trust too, because am I going to really want to talk to you if I'm going to feel like you're going to be lashing out and attacking me? The other thing that I think is important for us to recognize is, am I creating a dynamic in this relationship that uh, encourages mistrust, that encourages a person to hide information. And I know you all are thinking, well, I'm not encouraging anybody to do anything, but our behaviors absolutely give people permission or can give people restrictions. So we want to make sure that we're creating a safe space to be able to have conversations that we are um, approaching things in a gentle way. When we're frustrated or we've been in our heads too much thinking about things and we've created all of these scenarios, you've been over here at this gym working with this personal trainer that looks like they could be a model and I saw the way that personal trainer looked at you and I know it's got to be something going on with y'all and then I'm off to the races in my head and so I'm attacking you from the gate about something that is a misperception of mine or, or maybe I am picking up on something, but I'm not having a conversation with you. I'm interrogating you or I'm already telling you you're guilty. So we want to make sure that we're creating an environment where we can have these, these conversations and people not feel like they're being attacked. Okay. So that's both of us. But if you have issues of control and you want to know where your partner is at all times and you want them to scan the room so you can, see who's in there and you've got a low jack on their car and you think that's going to prevent somebody from 
cheating on you, I do want to tell you that that is not an effective way of approaching it. But if you address the reasons why you're feeling insecure, if you address talking through things and how to manage things in an effective way when there is a conflict or an issue of mistrust or suspicion or whatever it may be, something that's off, then that is the way that you will be more effectively able to address these issues, whether it's in uh, intimacy and communication, worth, or there has been a violation of trust previously in past relationships. So get to the point, Doc. All right. Um, there are ways to have healthy relationships without trying to control a person, having unrealistic expectations of a per person or not effectively communicating what you actually want and instead trying to get information in other ways. You can create a trusting, healthy environment. You can get past hurts and you can also move forward to create a space where you all can explore healthy options to deal with things that come up in your relationships without snooping. Okay, so follow me, Tea Time with Dr. Tarver, Facebook and Instagram, Tea Time with Tarver on, on um, YouTube, and also at Tea Time with Dr. Tarver on your favorite podcast listening stations. All right, you all be well.